or smear oil like that or something. And it means uh, the anointing. And charis is grace, of course. You know what that is. Charisma is a, what we're going to be discussing tonight, these gifts. And they are gifts given to you by God's grace and his gratuity. They are not gifts that you earn because you're smart, you're good looking, you've worked hard, you've put your... No, these are gifts given by grace and love. That's how they come to you. They are charisma, gifts unearned, undeserved. I don't deserve any of the gifts. I don't deserve to be saved. I don't deserve nothing. I deserve judgment, damnation, and hell. But I heard a knock on the door. It was mercy. And that's the only place I can afford to live is mercy. I can't take anything else or I'll go under. Glossa, we've gone over that numerous times. That's your gift of tongues. That's a language you did not learn. Could be in English, could be French, could be Spanish, could be Portuguese, could be heavenly language. But it's a language you didn't learn. Dialectus is a language you did learn. Anybody here take Spanish when they were in school? That person did. He was learning a new, and our English word is what? Dialect. So if you go to Africa, for example, and you, you speak the main language, you're still in big trouble. If you go into the outer communities, there are different dialects. If you speak the language, you still don't know what they're saying. So you've got to have an interpreter. Okay? Kindness is the word. Adjective means fresh or new. Adjective means totally different. For example, a, a goat and a sheep. They're different. They're, an, they're both animals, but they're totally different. Two goats are two different animals, but they're not heteros. They're somewhat similar. Huh? <clears throat> Which means this word, alos. Jesus said, I'm going away, and when I, when I get to heaven, I'm going to send you another comforter. Alos is someone of the same kind and quality as me. Another comforter. That's this word, not this word, which is different. Paul told the Galatians, some people are preaching another Jesus, heteros, a different kind of Jesus, a fake one, phony one, a fraud, a lust Jesus, money, prosperity, another Jesus, a fake one, different, goat, sheep, Pluto, Jupiter. All right? A Doria is like a gift, something you just give somebody. Hi, what do you need here? Don't worry about it. That's what these gifts are. God just gives them to you, and when he gives you one, <coughs> he never takes it back, even if you go back into sin. Here's your gift. Two years later, you at the whorehouse. What happened to your gift? You still got it. What's the purpose of the gifts? What's the purpose of the anointing? Well, the war, as I mentioned earlier, 1 John chapter 2 says, the anointing you received of him, meaning Jesus in the context, abides in you. That's the Greek word, meno. It means to remain. Okay, it came in here and it stays. It never leaves. Kind of like some of your relatives. <laughs> they come for a visit, take a gulp. Oh. You have a hot flash, a pressure. Well, they'll be here temporarily. They get a phone call. They're not gone. They've now may know. They've moved in. That's what this is. The anointing comes in and it stays with you. Okay? So you do not need men to teach you the things of the spirit because the anointing downloads it into your spirit man. The same anointing, there it is, Christma, charismatic teaches you all things and it's always in truth. Yes. The Holy Spirit never has anything to do with a lie which causes bondage. Mark chapter 16, verse 19. Streamers, after the Lord had spoken to them, he was received up in the heaven. He moved to the right hand of God. It says they went forth, they preached everywhere. Now we're running into the purpose of your anointing. 
Why do you have the anointing? What is the purpose of the anointing? To party on, dude? No. To be amused? No. To have a Holy Ghost, happy, hilarious? No. That is not the purpose of the anointing. It's not the purpose of the gift. What is it? Here it is. Your job is to confirm the word. Okay? Mormons cannot confirm the word. Why? No anointing. Jehovah Witnesses can't. Con no. Why not? No anointing. The Holy Ghost doesn't just tell you something. He can back it up. Amen. See? Amen. False religions, con artists, moonies. No. It's all theory. Cults. Teach, teach, teach. Control, control, control. Technique, technique. No. The Holy Ghost can prove it. He's the last person anybody in the world would ever want to challenge. He can actually do something. Cult can't. You know, they're constantly dissimilating, fabricating, falsifying, hiding, juking, trying to get out of something. Not the Holy Ghost. He'll stand right there and let's... I'm your huckleberry. I can prove it. With what? Simeon. This is the Greek word miracles. Miracles are for what? Your, your, your humor? You to party on? No. Miracles are to confirm the... It's to fight the war, not to party. So this isn't a disco. This is a war. I'm confirming my word. See? Prophets of Baal. Oh, nobody showed up. God's prophet, I confirm this is the Holy Ghost showing up. You challenging me? Not a good idea. Hebrews chapter 2, verse 4, God bears witness. Again, confirming. We need a witness that what you're telling somebody is right. Jesus Christ is the Son of God. Well, hey, no, uh, I'm, a, I'm a Muslim. He was a great prophet. Okay. No. No, he wasn't. Yes, he was. No, he wasn't. Yes, he was. What do you got there? Two boobs. You got a Christian that has no power and he has no chance of converting the person. Hello? You can't do anything unless you can confirm it. Put up or shut up. That's right. The Holy Ghost will put it up. What does he do? What's he bear witness with? How does he do it? See? Miracles, terrace, wonders, dunamis, supernatural power. See? If I'm a Moni, I just got my cult stuff to tell you. But I got no dunamis to back it up. See? We use manipulation. Okay, now you're going to fast. You're going to do fundraising. We're going to put you in a commune. You're going to sleep here. We're going to sing to you. Okay, that's all human manipulation trying to keep you under control. That's not dunamis power. That's what you have in your spirit man right now. That's what we must release. And what? Yes! Your gifts. You're supposed to have gifts. If you're born again, you're supposed to have them. Here they are. Affirming God's word. I'm a witness to the true God. Across the street is a smoke shop over there. Right there. If you go out that door, there's a smoke shop there. You probably didn't notice it. It's run by Muslims. Well, in my utter amazement one day, the guy, one of the owners, can't remember his name, Mahmoud or something, comes over to see me. Comes in my office, sits down. We have a little talk about Islam, Jesus. He gives me his pitch. I said, okay, well, what do I do now, Lord? He doesn't believe. Uh, I'm not sure what to do. I, I thought, well, I'm going to take a shot at this one. He says, I got a bad back. I need, I need prayer. I need my back healed. I says to the guy, well, if your back gets healed right now, would you turn your life over to Jesus? Because Allah hadn't healed your back, has he? He said, no, he hasn't healed me, but no, Jesus is just a great prophet. Oh, God, I'm, 
I wanted to get up and hit my head right over here. So I said, well, you know what? This guy's not cooperating with nothing. You ever witness somebody who cooperates with nothing? Nobody? Oh, I have many times, unfortunately. So I said, well, I'm just going to take a shot at this thing. So I get up and I said, Lord, mock mood here, whatever his name was, I do not remember. I cannot pronounce their names. Don't listen to the radio program, Monday. I said, he doesn't believe in Jesus, but I do. He doesn't know what a... He doesn't know what a wonderful person you are. I do. I do, I do know. And I know you love him. I know you do. I know it. So, Lord, would you please reach out to this poor man. Back, you be healed. Boom! I grabbed his back. I said, now bend over. Started crying. Back was instantly healed. And I said, now Jesus did that. Allah didn't do it. And then he left praising God. Now, you want to turn your life over to Christ? He didn't want to do it. No. Hey, I did the best I could. <clears throat> what was I doing there? This verse. I was bearing witness of who? Christ the healer. See? He gave me a bunch of Islamic crap. I just parted it like the Red Sea. Went right to the back. What was I doing? Use, use your gift and your anointing. I was using love. That guy will never forget that. As long as he, hopefully on his deathbed or something, something will kick in. Hey, wait a minute! There was a guy over here. I don't know. The Holy Ghost knows. He knows how to do it. I don't. According to whose will? Yeah, you can't just cherry pick the stuff. I'll take that and I'll take that and, I'll ta and then run to the checkout. It doesn't work that way. Okay? He picks out what he wants to give you. Section 2, what's the key to opening the doors to the gifts and the anointing? What is the key to it? Let's find out. Isaiah chapter 28. With stammering lips and another tongue, verse 11, I will speak to this people, Jehovah said. He's talking to the Jews. And this verse is quoted by Paul later of the, the supernatural outpouring on the day of Pentecost of the Holy Ghost, which I, no one had ever seen up till that time. Before that, the Holy Ghost wouldn't hang around with people too often. Why? Because they're rotten sinners. So Isaiah would come down and perform a great miracle. Boom! Incredible. Then the Holy Ghost would leave. The anointing would lift off of him and He'd go back to his glorious place wherever he goes. Now, at the day of Pentecost, you can have the Holy Ghost 24-7. Seven days a week, 365. Things are different now. And Jehovah said, I'm not going to talk to you the way I normally talk to you in regular languages. I'm going to use lega, what appears to sound like buffoonery. I use that term because I've had that used on me several times. I'm kind of used to it. But with another, another different type of language, I'm going to speak to you a heavenly language. I'm going to speak to these people. This is the rest that you can cause the weary to find their rest. And Glossa is one of the most wonderful ways to rest your spirit if you're all stressed out. Glossa, speaking in tongues, just draws in the spirit and you just go nice. Okay? Every Thursday night we have a special meeting here. That's all they do here for a couple hours. People speak in tongues. There's no teaching or anything. You just come in, download the anointing, go back to the war. It's a refreshing, but they would not hear. And to this day, 2012, just before the end of the world, which is December of what day is it? 21st. December 21st is over. You folks are running out of time. 1 Corinthians chapter 14. Paul quotes this verse from the great prophet Isaiah. And he will speak with tongues. Now listen to this. There it is. That's our word. Heteros. Different 
it's different, not similar. So what I'm using tonight is, or attempting to use, is English. Because that's my language. I use English because I was taught that when I was a kid. Didn't do well with it. What are the two types of glossa? The Greek word is glossa. It means a supernatural language you did not learn. Well, there's two types in the Bible. Here we go. New Testament, I should say. The self-edification glossa. And here's the benefits. It's in 1 Corinthians 14. If you, when you, when you choose to speak in glossa, or tongues as they say, you're, you're choosing of, to do it of your own free will. And you can turn it on and turn it off whenever you want to. And that's the same way with all the gifts. You can turn them on and turn them off whenever you want to. And we'll get to that in a minute. All the, the gifts and all the anointing, everything is all subject to the prophets. Okay? But you can turn it on and turn it off. If you decide to turn it on, like I said on Thursdays, or in every day of your life, hopefully, these are the benefits that you get for doing that. It's in 1 Corinthians 14. The person speaking directly to God and to no one else Nobody knows what the person is saying. It's edifying me personally. It's doing something for me personal. Not you. Not mock mood. Me. Huh? Paul said, I want everybody speaking in tongues or glossa. And you can pray to interpret your glossa if you so choose to do. If you do not choose that, you do not have to do that. It also outlines these benefits. When you're speaking in glossa, your spirit is praying. Yeah, I did a radio show a couple months ago on a research study they did at the University of Wisconsin or something. And they brought these people in who were speaking in tongues. And they discovered that the portion of the brain that is working right now as I'm talking to you, speaking English, does not work during glossa. And the researchers were stunned. Why isn't... This person, I hear him speaking, but he's not speaking. Why is that? It just says it right. What was that? Not about you can't think about it. That's right. Verse 14. His brain's, His brain's not working. Correct. Why isn't it working, though? Here it is. It comes out of your spirit, man. That's why you're not understanding it. I don't know what I said. Okay. You can sing and play in glossa. You can uh, bless the Lord in glossa. What is this word? Eulogio. A eulogy, yeah. That's big with Catholics. Hey, where'd Steve go? They do a lot of eulogies in their services. Okay. Uh, you can bless the Lord. That means to speak out a positive statement or summary over a person. I bless you, my son, and I pray God's blessings upon you and I love you and good. I'm eulogizing this guy. I've seen him before. Don't worry about me abusing people. I know that guy. Paul said, I speak in glossa like a madman more than anybody else. And is it a coincidence that he was the most anointed Christian that ever lived? I think there's a connection there. All right. And it is a what? Simeon, a supernatural miracle to who? If, if I speak in tongues now, you're, there's no miracle to her. She speaks in tongues. But unbelievers are going, wait a minute here. Okay? As soon as an unbeliever hears you glossa, they reach a fork in the road. They go, no, or hmm. Have you noticed that? It, there's almost never a neutral thing. It's either, this sucks. Wait a minute, there might be something to that. Let me investigate. Just like the gospel. Some of the seed throws here, some throws over there, some of it throws over here. This works out, that works out for a while, this doesn't work out at all. And, verse 39, Paul said, do not forbid this. 99% of churches forbid it. They don't have anything to do with it because they don't understand it. And what's, why don't they allow it? don't like to get involved in things they don't understand. It's human nature. 
If something's confusing, a human will step back for a second. It's just built inside of them. First Corinthians chapter 14, streamers, verse 19. Paul goes on to explain, now listen, this glossa thing has got to be managed properly. Okay, if this thing gets out of control, we're going to be in trouble. So he comes in and manages it properly, and he explains to them, I'd rather speak five words with my noose, my mind, than speak 10,000 words that you don't understand. If I've got five words for you, God said I love you. That is more important to someone who needs love than me speaking in tongues 10,000 words to preacher Earl. Is what Paul's saying. I'm paraphrasing. Huh? Alright, type two. There's a second type of glossa. Okay? And this causes a lot of confusion in the text. I'll try to straighten it out if I can. Verse 14, chapter 14 in 1 Corinthians goes over the second type of glossa, which is for the public. In this chapter, he breaks down public blessings in public. One of them is prophecy. Uh, Thus saith the Lord, Ma. I'm doing this in public. Okay, I'm not doing it at home on my own. I'm not looking in the mirror. Thus saith the Lord. Mike, I'm telling you. No, no, that's not. I'm doing it for the edification of the body of believers. Okay? And he says, glossa and the interpretation are the same thing. Why? Paul was a very bottom line oriented person. The bottom line is, I got God's information to you. It may have been in a prophetic word. Maybe she spoke in tongues. Maybe he interpreted it. But it doesn't matter. The bottom line is you need to know that information. Okay? And then he goes on to explain interpretation of tongues. Interpretation of tongues gives something to the people in public. Revelation, knowledge, prophecy, and doctrine. So it's God speaking to you in one of those four areas. Information you need to have. Or he wants you to have. Verse 27. You're only to do that three times in one service. Okay? Then you cut the thing off to avoid confusion or boredom or whatever. And then he says, uh, don't have somebody give messages and glossa if there's no interpreter around. Not everybody has the gift of interpretation. Guessing at it is not interpreting it. Guessing at it is what demons do. Because they don't know what you're saying. You know what the beauty of praying in tongues is, glossa, the devil doesn't know what you're praying. And he's as lost as everybody else is. But what you're actually praying is a first class butt whooping on him. He doesn't even know it. He's going to get his face kicked in and it's going to come as a surprise. Why? Because you are glossa. He doesn't know what he's going to get. My heart bleeds for him. Not... You know, he's to take whippings. He's built to take a whip. The tomb is empty. Mark 16, are you ready? These signs, same Greek word, Simeon, miracles, will follow, again, non-sinners, not the unsaved, only those who believe. Correct? And this word is not pistis faith, it is pistuo believe it is a verb the gifts of the spirit only work if you're doing something you did not hear me you cannot get anything done unless you do something 
That's deep. Pistuo is a verb. It's an action verb. See? You can't sit at home and hope somebody gets healed. They're not going to get healed. Now they're going to get healed. You are going to go over there and walk into that room. Come here! Hey! Get up! What am I doing? I'm pistooling. I'm doing something. You have to do something to get the anointing to move. Sitting around in your dead rear end will get you nothing from God. Nothing will happen. No one will get healed. No one will get saved. These signs will follow those who are actively believing and doing something. Translation is what that verse is telling you in Greek. You've got to go do something. Paul likened Christianity to running a race. What's that? A verb. Racing is a verb. You're running down the track. See, I'm verbing. I'm pistooling. Looking good, too. In my name, they shall what? Cast out. Ekbalo means to throw out. Like you'd throw the trash out. Demons. And they will do what? There it is again. Glossa. Kindness. Fresh, fresh new languages. Supernatural language you did not learn. Something miraculous. See? Now I've been praying for years to get the gift of tongues and I can't get it. I just come in and I sit and I just pray. Okay, you're not going to get it. You're never going to get it. You have to do something. You have to step out on your faith. What's the first thing you got to do? Move those liver lips of yours. Move your lips. See, I'm moving my lips. What I'm doing is choreographing these deep teachings. You move your lips by faith. When you get healed, your knee gets healed, you take a step by faith, pistuo. You do something by faith. You lay hands on the sick. You're doing something by faith. And you're moving your lips. See? Don't come down here and sit like a statue and pray to get... It's not going to happen, okay? Just, nothing's going to happen to you. It's not how it works. You have to. Just do well. Do something. Speak. Go somewhere. Lay hands. Preach. Teach. Pray. I'm doing something. Doers. Be doers of the word, not hearers only. Faith without works is dead. Oh, you're saved. You believe in God. Wonder good for you. Okay, that's fine for you. But what the heck's that going to do for him? Nothing. You've got to do something. Faith without works is dead. What kind of works? Religious works? <laughs> Rituals, no, spiritual works. See, you're ministering in the spirit. You're doing something spiritual. Don't we do something in church? No, you're just going through a bunch of Mickey Mouse rituals. Time to sing. Amazing. That's not working. That's not doing nothing. Okay. What good is that doing? Most people just sing. They don't even mean it. Just, you know, singing got anybody anything. The Mormon Tabernacle Choir would be leading the country in a revival. They can out sing you seven days a week, 365 days a year out sing you. They don't have the anointing. This is talking about spiritual. You've got to do something spiritually. See? Me sharing the gospel with you and praying for your sickness. I'm doing something spiritual. Right? We're having our Easter celebration. That's not going to do anybody any good. Who gives a rat's fanny about your Easter celebration? Everybody comes in infected with demons, sick as a dog. You have your celebration. You go home sick as a dog, infected with demons. Why? Nobody's doing anything spiritual. Oh, that's cute. Cute don't do anything for anybody. See, cute wears off. Six people are married said, Amen. <laughs> Kindness glossa. My, my, my wife wasn't one of them. See, look at this face. Is this a face you can trust? It isn't, is it? No, let's go to the next verse. The baptism of the Holy Ghost, number two. Section two, here we go. Mark chapter one, verse eight. John said, I 
baptize you just with water, okay? Is water bad? No, it's good, absolutely. If you've never been baptized in water, get baptized in water, okay? Please do that. But there's something incredible beyond that. What is it? It's the baptizo. The Greek word means to dip or dunk under the water, dunk under, see? If I spray you off or hose you off or spit on you, that's not baptizo. She's not baptized. Don't go get a garden hose. You know, I'm going evangelizing today. I'm going to hose down my neighbors. That's not going to do anybody any good, hosing down neighbors. Don't do that. I've done it before, but it was an accident. Baptizo means to dunk or dip under one. See, I'm going under. Well, this is spiritual. Your spirit man goes under. The water? No! The presence of the spirit. Which you're going to be receiving tonight in the healing service. You will be baptized, dunked, immersed in the Holy Ghost. Acts 1. Being together, Jesus commanded the disciples. He didn't ask them or suggest it. This is an absolute commandment. It's a commandment for all Christians. Do not do nothing. Okay? Now here you see the failure of Christianity in America and why it stinks so bad. People go into the ministry because they went to Bible college or seminary or somebody gave them a certificate and they have no business being in the ministry. They were not told to go into the ministry by God. They had some wild idea in their head or a demon told them to go get some training. First, first, before you go into the ministry, first, you do what? You go here and wait for the Father's promise. Had they not done this, none of us would be here tonight. No one would be saved. Christianity would have fizzled out within four weeks. It had been gone. No one had ever heard of Jesus Christ. Ever. They had never heard of him. Another dead Jew. That's all he was. Not here. See? I want to send you another Alos comforter, somebody just like me, and he's going to wreak havoc on the devil. Yes. It's going to start tonight here. Amen. Go there and wait. Do this first. First things first. Here's what people don't understand. The Holy Ghost is the first things first person. And I see that all the time on my marriage counseling sessions. Where somebody comes in, they want, they've been single for years. When's God going to send me a man? And I said... <laughs> He's not sending you a man until you get healed because he loves that man. <laughs> Where's my wife? I've been single for four... Hey, your wife ain't coming in until you get healed. Why? He cares for her too much to send her to you. What am I illustrating here? The Holy Ghost always does first things first. That's how he does it. And I'll tell you, it's frustrating. Yeah, I'll admit it. I've been frustrated with him. 100% my fault. 100%. Why? I forgot this rule. You know, sometimes teachers forget their own teaching. You've got to do this and that and that first, and then I'll do this. See? And I try to get him to skip a step. <laughs> I'll try to do it, and I'll even sit down with him and give him some of my great wisdom and my reasoning which is fabulous and I'll explain to him now look here we need this done here so what you need to do is that and this and then all I get is a silent treatment and then I got to go back over here okay now all right I'll face her I'll apologize you know do that first Tonight at the receiving service, that's what you're going to do. I'm just going to ask you, what do you need to get done first before you get these gifts? Why haven't you got your gifts? Something's blocking it. First things first. Well, the first thing, the first thing you got to do is go and wait for the promise of the Father. Now, Acts chapter 2, verse 4. Here it is. The day of Pentecost. What's that word mean? Pentecost day? 50, right? 
It's in Leviticus chapter 23. They were all in one place and one accord. Now right there you know they weren't at church. Everybody comes to church, they got all kinds of different agendas. Here in this session here, everybody is in Suddenly, see, once you're, it's suddenly he'll move on you. He moves quickly. What's crazy about the Holy Ghost is he wants you healed more than you want to be healed. And he wants you to receive these gifts more than you want them. But he's a first things first person. So he's trying to get this and that fixed first before he suddenly goes there. But when he gets first things first fixed, he wastes no time to make his move. Why? He's so anxious for you to put a beating on the devil he can barely see straight. He's chomping at the bit for you to pay the devil back for your sickening, miserable life of sorrow and misery. He wants you to pay the devil back for stealing all your money and rotting out all your relationships and wrecking your body and stealing your mind. He's ready for a fight and he wants to do it now. Once he gives first things first, he moves quickly. Yes, you get healed fast. You get delivered quick. Amen. That thing got out of the bag. He doesn't wait around. In my mind, it seems like he's taking forever. The problem's not on his end, it's on my end. First, things have to be done first. I have to fix this first. Then suddenly, he makes his move. What'd they hear? Bias. A violent wind came in. Like a hurricane. Foe means to blow hard. It's used with humans. Like if I just blew real hard. I didn't take a, one of those atloids. So I'm not going to do that to him. But as I was to blow hard. Well I'll do it here. <laughs> what was I doing there? Foe. Well a storm is like a giant blow. And that's what it was. Okay. I threw that in for my own humor. I didn't expect anybody to get that. <laughs> what happened? Boy, I'll tell you what, when the Holy Ghost moves suddenly, He just fills up the place. Yes, yeah. The demons are fleeing, the sicknesses is gone, the mental illness falls apart, everything yeah. just boom, there He is. I'm ready. And suddenly there appeared to them cloven, this is a strange old English word, the Amorizo partition means to split or section off, you know. Years ago, uh, when I first got out of college, I couldn't find a counseling job, so I had to take a job in insurance. And I was, in the, I was a claims examiner. That's right, I know, I know I have investigation skills. I could follow you home. But we were in a luxury office building and we all had our office which was a partition. I had a partition here, I had a partition here and this was my entrance. And believe it or not, when I was just out of college, I was really proud of that little area. I was, what are you laughing at? I really liked this thing. What was I doing there? I would, it was split like this. You get one, you get one, you, you, you partitioned off, each one throughout the crowd or wherever they were, whatever kind of building it was, okay? And fire, glossa, an unlearned language, like fire, it was like fire. It didn't say it was fire, it was kind of like fire. That's easy to visualize here. We get, we get these fires all over the state every year. Everything's up in flames. And the flame is blowing 
See the winds blowing through. There's a loud noise coming through. And there's the partition of each person. It's like they're on fire. They're not burning up. They're just like they're, wow, a flame. Fire. And it what? Cathedral hovered over, hovering over each one of them. Years ago, I was in a, when I was a teenager, I was in a Catholic woman service, and during the altar call, the Holy Ghost was absolutely phenomenal. He just, just like, weird. Just hovered over the people and just, people were getting healed. They didn't have that noise. I added that noise. But that's what happened. That he was cathedral. Wow. And they were all, why? It says they were all with one accord. They weren't at church. They were all agreeing together. Holy Ghost time. Not one person in the group. See? Like tonight. This is perfect. Every person here is ready to receive their gifts. They're ready to remove the blocker to their gifts. See, we are all on the same page. See, what we got here tonight is a big old happy family. Uh, and they began to speak with, oh, had a different, not Alice, similar. In other words, I'm speaking in English, but I, now I sound like a Southern. No, it's totally different. Glossa, and the, as the Spirit gave them the ability to do it. Now this section here throws people off so bad it's unbelievable. Authogenomai. It means to speak it out. But it doesn't say how to speak it out. Okay? So here's the problem. Some people have a dramatic, mind-boggling, atomic bomb type experience when they are baptized in the Holy Ghost and receive glossa. Okay? Some people don't. The Bible doesn't say that it's received the same way like a cookie cutter in every person. It's not the Bible. Thus saith the Lord, you will fly through the room, crash into a wall, and blow up speaking in tongues. That's not in there. I have had several hundred people receive their gift of tongues without hitting them, slapping them, painting them, beating on them, yelling at them. Nothing. It just started coming out. Same thing with healing. Same thing. You know, that Muslim I just told you about, Milikud, came in, be healed. I felt nothing. I didn't feel nothing. See? Well, the Bible doesn't say how you feel when you receive these gifts. That varies from Christian to Christian and person to person. The demons tell you, oh, you didn't get it like Uncle Harry got it. Remember that? Uncle Harry flew out the door and landed on the barn. You just got it here. And the demons talk you out of it because you're not on the barn. That's a lie. You know why it's a lie? Because he knows you're going to get all that stuff later if you just stick with it. But if he can talk you out of it now, you're ruined for the rest of your life. They're smarter than we are.
white people. Now, these gifts in the Bible are not itemized as to how they operate. That's up to the each individual person who receives the gift. Okay? So, uh, if you have someone who does something physical, that's not wrong. If you have someone that doesn't do anything, that's not wrong. Okay? Now, these guys, what were they doing? Well, they had set this little system up. He'd done it before. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to say this, and then you say that. You say this. You say that. Then, well, all oh, hallelujah. Hey, that's not in the Bible. That's something he worked out on his own. Are you following me? And that's not wrong. Now, you might say, well, I don't feel comfortable with that. That's fine. That is perfect. If you don't feel comfortable with it, God bless you. Love the stuffing out of you. Okay? The reason you don't have the gift is because you're criticizing the way he's doing it. Now that you're criticizing someone, you have now blocked your gifts, you blocked your healing, and you blocked your deliverance because you opened your big, fat mouth. As soon as you criticize somebody else for what they're doing, you have now hung yourself, and you get nothing. Whoa, that isn't even nice. What you should have said was, you know, I wouldn't have done it like that, but there's nothing, the Bible doesn't, that's, okay, whatever. That's what you should have said. Did that help? How you minister in the Spirit is not in the Bible. Okay? So, you may not like Peter. Silver and gold have I not. And he reached out and granted pulls this guy up. You say, well, oh my God, that's a lawsuit. Okay, yeah, here in a Phoenix, yeah, that's a loss. Could be a lawsuit, sure. So you don't feel comfortable with that. That's fine. But when you criticized Peter for doing it, you then quenched the spirit. You rotted out your anointing. And now you get nothing. That guy got healed. How should I handle this? Let me think about it. Hmm. I guess I shouldn't be criticizing people. Thank you. You folks are divinely inspired. <laughs> How you minister the Spirit is not in the Bible. Here's the Bible and here's how they did it. The Bible doesn't say that's how you have to do it. So, Peter, check it out. The guy's a fisherman. He's a big, strong dude. He's used to handling things with his hands. Okay? He's not a, an accountant. Matthew sits around filling out ledgers, stealing money from people all day. So he's a paper shuffler. 
Well, Matthew probably wouldn't have felt comfortable grabbing this guy and hauling him off his cot. Peter, a fisherman, pulling the boat in, pulling the nets in, no problem. Get up in Jesus' holy name. Well, Matthew's not sitting around, don't you think you should have written the prayer on a paper? And get... Matthew wasn't criticizing him for pulling him up. Peter didn't criticize him for pushing papers. Why? They wanted to save their anointings. See, you're going to quench the spirit by criticizing him. That's outrageous. I can't believe you did that. I can't believe you did it either. You just quashed your anointing. Don't do that. Well, I wore that out. <laughs> now, when you receive your gifts, when you receive your glossa, when you receive the baptism of the Spirit, when you get born again, when you do all these wonderful things with the Holy Ghost, it all comes to your spirit man. And the fruits and gifts of the Spirit all come out of your spirit man. They do not come out of your suke, your soul. They come out of your pneuma, your spirit, where the Holy Spirit lives. Jesus called that your belly. Out of your belly shall flow rivers of living water. This speaking of the Spirit was not yet given. It's the Holy Ghost coming out of your belly. Your spirit man is where all these incredible gems and treasures can be found in every born-again Christian on the planet Earth. They're all in there. They just haven't been released. They haven't been let out. They're boxed in. How do you box them in? I just told you one way. Criticize this guy on how he's unleashing them so you can keep yours boxed up. That's one way to do it. There are many others. It all comes out of your spirit, man. There it is. For example, we'll get to this in a minute. The gift of knowledge. Comes out of your spirit, man. Where does it go? Oop. To your noose, your mind. Then where does it go? Probably out of your lips. You know, a boom, bang. God told me such. Uh, I'm speaking it. Bang, boom, bang. The gift of wisdom comes from where? The Holy Spirit here. The gift is in here. It goes to the mind. The revelation comes into the mind. Boop. I know what your problem is. Here's how you fix it. Bang, bing, boom. Wow, where'd that come from? Came out of Numa. Came out of a spirit man. Now those guys at the, uh, at the Pentecostal thing there, they were all dancing, see? They were all white people. They were trying, let me put it this way. They were trying to dance. Okay? Now what's that a combination of? Well, it could be, a, it's a combo job. You have emotions that come out of your soul. You have the lightness and joy of the spirit here. And so the combo is positive emotions. Yes! Thank you, Jesus. Okay? Uh, you get the phone call. You've been laid off. Oh, no! Oh, God! You're feeling emotions coming out of the soul, but they are not from the Holy Spirit. He wanted you laid off and had a backup plan waiting for you just like that, and you ruined it. Adversity. Oh, no! Oh, my God! I can't believe this crap! That's coming out of your soul, your negative emotions. What are you really doing? Quenching the spirit because he wanted that thing out of the way. Now he's got something great for you. Bad news? Bad news, yes! That unleashed the spirit to finish off his job. Brother Mike, are you telling me a bad attitude is not good for the Holy Spirit? Yes. A bad attitude quenches the moving of the spirit. Critical spirit stops him cold. Acts streamers, Acts chapter 2, verse 7. They were all amazed, saying, Behold, are these people not just run of the mill folks from Galilee? See, the devil is going to send you all kinds of people, usually relatives, usually friends. Once you get your anointing, they're going to run you down. See, 
oh, that ain't real, that ain't happening, you don't deserve that, you're not good enough for that, and they'll run, run this negative line on you, you know. See, what are you doing? What are these people doing here? You're just running the mill, you just live in Galilee, you guys are, you guys are losers. That's the devil talking, he's lying. As soon as somebody starts criticizing you like that, you should have had that little light go on in your head. Hey, I'm on the right track here. That's a red flag. God's got a miracle for me because you're criticizing me. The demons are always lying. If they're telling you one thing, it's usually the other. You're a loser. I'm a loser. Translation, I'm a winner. You're lying. Oh, what are you? You're, your family, you're, everybody in your family's mentally ill. Oh, good, good. Well, that must mean I'm going to be healing of other families that are all mentally ill. Thank you for that criticism and running me down and degrading me. Thank you. That helps me. Now, I know I'm on the right track because you're criticizing me. Because you're an expert. Well, these people were experts. Hey, these guys are just regular goofs running around town here. What is going on here? They don't know all of these languages. What in the world's going on? Now, here you see, there it is, the electus. They were speaking languages that these other people knew. They were learned human languages. Glossa, but human language. You can have glossa, heavenly language. You can have a glossa, human language. They're speaking all of our dialects. So, uh, this is not a self-portrait. It's a cartoon. Glossa is supernatural language you didn't learn. Dialect is one you did learn. But in this case, it was both. It was a learned language for somebody else, but not the person speaking it. So if suddenly you're speaking Spanish, you don't know Spanish, that's glossa. If you learn Spanish in school and you're speaking it, that's not glossa. Acts chapter 10, verse 44. While Peter spoke these words, the Holy Ghost, what? It's like that Catherine Coleman service. It just kind of fell suddenly. I, I couldn't believe my eyes. It was like an instantaneous thing. It just kind of swept over the 16,000 people. <laughs> wow. Never seen anything like it in my life. To this day, I've never seen anything like it. The Holy Ghost, what? Sometimes he just falls on people. Huh? Last week, I had the most amazing thing happen to me. I had a woman come in for, for a prayer, and she brought her husband in and her son. And the son was the stepson of her husband. And he wasn't saved. So the son was having all kinds of problems. He was backslidden. I took him back in that room there and prayed for him. And To make a long story short, he gave his heart back to the Lord and he, his glossa, his gift of glossa was kind of blocked and it got healed and it was just flowing like a river. He was so happy he couldn't see straight. So he goes back in the office and then I said, would you mind if I prayed for you, sir? No, no, that's okay. So I bring the husband in there and uh, I laid him down on the healing bench and he wasn't saved. Cause, and I asked him, I said, are you a Christian? And he says, well, no, I'm not. And I said, Did, have you ever had any interest in becoming a Christian? Yeah, I do. Well, yeah, yes, I do. And I said, okay, you, is it okay if I pray for you? Sure, go ahead. So I start praying this ugly, filthy, nasty prayer. God, I pray for I ask you to forgive him for adultery, lying, cheating, hate, anger, and bitterness. I just ran down the whole list in Galatians. As I'm standing there, I look up, I suddenly see him heaving, gasping for breath, like that. The Holy Ghost while I was praying, he was listening to me, and he was kind of praying with me, and the Spirit of God was convicting him. These things that I was blowing out, I didn't know anything about him, 
where some of it was hitting home. I was lying. I was cheating. And it just fell on him, and he's on the bench heaving in this conviction coming over him. And I saw that, and I go, this is it. I'm, he's getting saved. So I start praying the salvation thing over him. And I said, hey, Linus, just pray this way. I know that God's touching you. Lord, please forgive me. Have mercy on my soul. Oh, God, have mercy. Jesus, help me. <gasps> then I said, now listen, you must be saved by now. Just go ahead and pray this way. And I started speaking in tongues and glossa. And I'm sitting there. And my jaw hits the floor. He starts flowing in glossa. I just kind of said, whoa, what happened there? Well, this went on for like 10 minutes. And I go into his wife, who's still sitting in my office. I said, you're not going to believe this. Your husband is in there. He just got saved. He's flowing in tongues and crying like a baby. This guy had gangster tattoos on and everything. He crying like a baby. I bring her in. I set her down in the chair and I said, now listen, uh, he's going to apologize to you some things, okay? So just sit there and listen to him. Well, he starts apologizing to her and I come back five minutes later, I open the door. They're, they were going to get divorced. They're holding each other's in their arms. Both of them are weeping. The marriage was completely restored right in front of my eyes. Then I said, I'm not done yet. Since this is unbelievable, I'm just going to go another step. Why not? I said, I want you to pray this prayer with me, sir. Satan, in Jesus' name, I command you to come out of my wife. The guy prays the prayer, and his wife starts to get delivered from demons right in front of my eyes. And it's violent. <clears throat> I said, sir, keep praying for her. And I ran out the room. <laughs> shut the door run up here where it was safe heard some clanking going on 10 minutes later I go back I get the son I bring the son in there she got delivered from spirits this guy had been saved about 8 minutes and was now an exorcist <laughs> all 3 of them are in the room now praying in tongues together What caused all that? Right here. He f I was praying in the corner. I looked over there. He fell. Now the Messianic Jews, which were already believers, they were astonished at the household of Cornelius. They were stunned. Why? They thought the Holy Ghost was just for Jews. Their minds are fried, as mine was in that corner, in that room, staring at this guy. I was like a Messianic Jew. That's what I looked like. There it is, Doria, a present. Here, I love you. What that family got, what was that? Just a gift. I love you. Here. None of them earned it. I earned nothing. None of us earned anything. It was all love. All grace. All mercy. Doria. It's a gift. They heard them do what? Bless her. And magnify God. Here's the key to it. Praise and glossa always go together see so if you're trying to get filled with spirit this is not the way to do it Lord what's your problem <laughs> I've been praying for years give it to me what are you lazy Ooh. no okay that's not the way to do it okay we don't approach him that way that is raw stupidity okay here's how we do it Jesus son of God oh I love you I'll praise your holy name see the difference there you don't see the difference? That's our seminar next week. What happened? Glossa. What was I doing there? I was, oh, glory. 
That draws in the Holy Ghost. This, moaning and griping, pushes him out. Now notice here they got their glossa and everything magnifying and they all got saved, what? Before they got baptized in water. What's that telling you? You can get saved without water baptism. So if you go to the hospital and somebody's on their deathbed and they're on a respirator, do not hesitate to pray for that person. Right. You don't have to unhook them from the reservoir right. while the nurses aren't listening. Drag the half-dead body down the hall. <laughs> Shove them in the toilet. No, you just go right for the Holy Ghost and he'll fall on them. None of those people can... He says, wait a minute here, why don't we give them everything we got since the Holy Ghost gave them everything he's got? Shrewd. Acts 19, verse 1. And this is our last section for part 1. Oh, I'm running out of time. I'll get that. A miracle happens in Acts chapter 9. It's unbelievable. Baptists got baptized. If a Baptist gets baptized, you know we're in the land of miracles. While Apollos, he's in Acts 18, was at Corinth preaching away. That was the guy that was the super preacher. Paul came to Ephesus. He found 12 disciples. Have you received the Holy Ghost since you believed? They were already believers. So we didn't even know there was a Holy Ghost. Now see, that's where you've got to have preaching, teaching, healing. And that's what Jesus did in his ministry. He always did those three things. He never did one or the other. All three. He always preached. He always taught. And he always healed. They all go together. Deliverance and healing were always together. Okay? If you're going to be a full gospel preacher, you must learn to preach, teach, and to heal. If you have one of those that you're not doing, you are spiritually failing. You're not preaching the full gospel. What's wrong with churches? I just told you. There, some of them are real strong on salvation, like Baptists. They're hardcore salvation people. you got to get saved, brother. The rest of it crashes and burns. No deliverances, no healing, no moving of the Spirit. What's wrong with the Baptists? Lutherans, Episcopals, anybody. You must preach the full gospel according to the Bible. And that's what God's calling you to do at the House of Healing. This is not a church, it's a discipleship training center. You are a full gospel woman of God, not a partial gospel. You do everything, see? You're a jack of all trades. You preach, you teach, then you move in the spirit. If you're not doing that, your church is not doing, what are they doing? They're failing God and failing the gospel. How do you know your church is a failure? I just told you. Are they doing what Jesus did, preaching, teaching, healing. I didn't go over well, but let's get back to the Baptists. This will cheer everybody up. Baptists always cheer people up. Paul said, John baptized with repentance, but here you've got to have the Moshiach, the Messiah, Jesus of Nazareth. And they said, that sounds great to us. Baptists are great with salvation. Very good. Very strong on it. They do a very good job. They were all saved and baptized and so on. And then it says, Paul said, well, now it's time to first you preach, then you teach, then you move in the Spirit. So Paul says, I do like Jesus did. I preach, I teach, and then I move in the Spirit. Okay, he moves around to these 12 guys and suddenly the Holy Ghost, there he goes again. And something else interesting in this verse, prophetia, they also prophesied. Now, you cannot make a doctrine out of that. Okay? Oh, I just read that. That means every time you get your gift of tongues, you have to prophesy. No, that is not true. You're now getting into legalism and the letter 
kills, but the Spirit gives life. Legalism kills Christianity, rots it out. Love covers a multitude of sins. So what happened here? Well, it was just one of those incidences. It doesn't mean it has to happen that way. Most of the time in my experience, just my experience, it does not happen that way. I don't see that very often. It's very rare, but hey, it happens. So it's not a theology or a doctrine. It's a, an experience. My experience may have been different. That doesn't make it wrong. Yours may be different. Doesn't make yours wrong. See? Where cults and legalized people lose their minds is that they take these, this text, they take the text out of context, then they make a doctrine out of it, which rots people's lives out. Why do the demons like legalism? Because they make sure people don't measure up. Once they don't measure up, condemnation sets in. Once condemnation sets in, the demons then drive them to rejection. Once rejection sets in, they drive them to hopelessness. And your ministry is over. Once you reach hopelessness, your ministry is over. This week I did a radio show on suicide. What's the key element in it? Most suicides are buried in hopelessness. The demon's ultimate goal is to drive the person to be hopeless. Once they reach that point, they can finish them off. They're easy pickings, like shooting cans off a fence. Hopelessness ruins you. They'll drive your marriage and make it so bad, to per as soon as you reach the point over your marriage, that you're hopeless, then it's over. The person sinks into despair when you're hopeless. They're kissing cousins. Despair always follows. Hopelessness. Legalism brings hopelessness. What is legalism? We do it this way. We come into church like this, and we sit like this, and we put this outfit on, and we wear these hats. You know what you're also wearing? Demons. Well, we sing this way and then we go. Well, who cares what, you're, what way you do it? Other than your little demonic. Well, that wasn't very nice. But I thought it was. It's true. Don't you see the difference? The Holy Ghost is freedom. Religion is bondage. See? Here's how we do it here. Ding, 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 ding. We play that, we wear this, we smell that, we eat this. Who cares what you're doing? Nobody's getting healed or delivered while you're doing this and doing that. Well, I'm pre-trib. Who cares whether you're pre-trib or not? December 21st is over anyway. <laughs> What's your problem, Einstein? Well, our church teaches that we do. Okay, bag your church and go with the Holy Ghost. Amen. Do yourself a favor. Right. Bag your religion. Bag your literature from the home office. We get a magazine from our home office. Good. You need something to start a fire with. You say. Go with the Holy Ghost. You'll be the happiest person to ever walk the planet Earth. Find the freedom of the Spirit. You will never be the same. Go through rituals at church, wearing things, smelling things, eating things. You will be in bondage within weeks. You know why? It doesn't work. The demons will tell you that. Hey, you've been saying all the prayers, haven't you? You've been reading them, haven't you? Yeah, I read my prayers. Stop reading the prayers. Burn them. Burn your prayers. Well, I diary all my prayers. Good. Find a trash can and put it in. Open your heart like a baby. Pray like this. Jesus, I love you. This guy's crazy. They don't teach this at the Calvary Chapel. They don't teach hardly anything at the Calvary Chapel. 
Okay, this is the moving of the Spirit, not Calvary Chapel. Amen. Amen. Okay, yeah, I'm going to get the emails. <laughs> Legalism ruins people's lives. Yes, it does. The moving of the Spirit sets them free. How you move in the Spirit is up to each individual. That's not the important thing. It's not the person. It's the moving of the Spirit that's important. That's what heals. Not how you do it. I went to a church once where they baptized people in one of the members pools you know swim pool when I was in Africa a bunch of people got saved I helped out with a baptismal service the grossest thing I've ever done in my life we were in the jungle and the stream was flowing it was muddy and you couldn't see the bottom of it and this preacher I was with, Francis, he preaches here on Sundays, didn't even flinch, just boom, headed down into the water. There could have been a black mamba in there for all I knew. I just stood up here praying for him, bless you, brother. And he's dunking him in muddy water. What's the point there? The point is nothing. It doesn't matter. Pools, muddy water, it's not what you're doing. It's the moving of the Spirit. That's how people get set free. Reading a prayer at the Lutheran Church. Writing a brochure. God, we come to you today and we... Jesus, help me! Amen. That prayer is heard. This one is ignored. <laughs> you need to can a prayer like you need another hole in your head. Prayers that get answered come from the heart. Miracles aren't in ministry books they're in childlike faith how am I getting filled with the spirit tonight you're just coming up here like a baby and receiving we're not going through a bunch of rigmarole you know let's get out the manual look at this thing Burn your manual. Open your heart. Should have stopped five minutes ago. <laughs> so, oops. All right, that's... We'll take uh, three minutes of questions. Does anybody have a question about what we just discussed? Not, what I, not that, but I mean this. <laughs> No one has a question here, and the <clears throat> testing one, two, three, four, five. Um, like um, the, what, what, what you, what you were saying about legalism, like Amish yeah. people, like would they what be them? considered very legalist? That's right. What about them? Well, the things I see them doing, you know, they put their hats on and they, yeah. the things they had on the pro, you know, program, and I said, right. wow, that looks like, is that legalism, what you're talking about? Is it legalism? You know, I don't know that much about the Amish. Uh, I've never really been interested in, in that kind of thing, but here's the deal. Here's legalism. If somebody tells you you have to go through this little procedure to get... You're teaching doctrines of demons, 1 Timothy 4.1. Okay? The Holy Ghost moves through the heart of the person, not through this activity that I'm jumping through these hoops. I'm hooping through religious. <laughs> Stupid. <laughs> well, I... I'm going to pray for you, but let me put on my cross and my shawl and my <laughs> cone head and let me get my four-pound cross and shove it in your face! 
What are you doing there? Legalism! Drop that crap! It comes from the heart! Well, my cross has Jesus hanging on, mine doesn't. Who cares? <laughs> You're not getting a miracle with either of them! Why? Because somebody told you you needed that to get something from... Oops! You didn't need it. Can you use that and get something from God? Yeah. Sure. You want to cross with that and this and all? Paint it green. Dip them in oil. It doesn't matter. As long as you don't think that thing, this thing, this thing has anything to do with that thing. See? So in our church, we wear ties. Great. Go ahead and wear a tie. Good for you. As long as you don't think wearing a tie has got anything to do with that. Nobody had a tie on in Ghana in the jungle at 11 o'clock at night when I was praying for the sick. They were all getting healed and the demons were flying out. Nobody had any ties. They can't afford a tie. Well, Mike Smith preaches heresy. Am I really preaching heresy? Really? Really? Good God, come on. What's happened? Arizona's going to hell in the handbasket. Why? We got churches all over the place. What we need is a moving of the Spirit, the gifts of the Spirit. Oh, that's what we need. Not a, yeah. Raise your hand if you have some kind of deep-seated hatred toward me right now. Raise your hand. There's two people over there. Rick, Steve. Say goodbye to those two. Yeah, that's right. Thank you, Mike Jones. Okay, knock it off. Do you understand? This is, the Holy Ghost deals with people's hearts, not their behaviors in religious rituals. This is not appealing to him. He's not interested. You do it this way, he does it that way. Hey, fine, good, go ahead. There's nothing wrong with that. Who cares? See? So is it legalism? It depends. It depends on the person. If you feel doing that thing is required to get something here, that's legalism. If you're just doing it because you like it, okay? Every year at the Church of the Nativity, the Orthodox religion goes stark raving mad. They all get dressed up in outfits and hats and bells and whistles. They turn lights on. They play music. Is there anything wrong with that? No. No. Go ahead. Put it on. Wear it. Fine. As long as you don't think that's required to please God. If you want to do it, okay, good. I'm not fine with me. If I was over there, I'd go to the service. I'd sit there and enjoy myself. Because I already know none of this stuff's required by God. This is just optional human behavior. And it's not, it's all legalism to them. To me, it means nothing. So it's not a burden to me. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Yes, sir. Uh, I had a question around that question. How you doing, Mike? Good. I missed you, Mike. Love you. Uh, I had a question about um, uh, procedures and, and um, you know, rituals and habits. Yeah. What about, uh, you know, if you look, listen to preachers or, you know, some, I was raised by saying, well, the word says this. And so, for example, I'll just throw one out, tithing. Um, 
Would you like to comment on that, Mike Smith? Is that your question? Well, that's, yeah, that's one of them initially. Oh, what's the next well, okay, one? Okay, I'm not trying to have a What's the next one? Um, we can start there. No, you can give me the next one. <laughs> <laughs> what's the next one? Um, uh, let's see here. Uh, having the, the, uh, the attitude that um, turning the other cheek, for example, or, or when people do you wrong and, and stuff like I'll that. I follow you. All right, here. Now, did you hear those questions? That's not legalism. Now, let's, here, here's how it works. If something's in God's Word, okay, the, like, for example, uh, bap, being baptized, that's right there. Okay? So, that's what we do. Okay? How you baptize is not in there. Like I mentioned earlier, muddy water in Ghana, swimming pool at the Assembly of God Church. Okay? That's not in the Bible. Okay? So you can get baptized anywhere as long as in your mind you don't think that to please God i got to have clean water in a pool and this muddy water in a stream in Ghana is not pleasing to God. That's legalism. If a subject is in the Bible, as he mentioned, tithing or turning the other cheek, that's not legalism. That's God's Word, so you do God's Word. Okay? How you turn the other cheek is up to you and the person abusing you. The circumstances of turning the other cheek are not there. So that's to be worked out by each individual saint of God. See that? So that's not legalism. Legalism is a man doing things trying to please God. See? I'm doing religious stuff and I'm pleasing God. No, you're not. It doesn't matter whether your church is white or pink. Now, it might for marketing purposes. But it has got nothing to do with the Holy Ghost. Because he don't hang around buildings. He hangs around people. Your temple is that, sir. It's not that thing down the street with all the windows and so on. Why do the demons want you to be legalistic? Because, like the Amish, like the whoever, you can't measure up. Oh, you blew it! Here are the rules. And you blew these rules! What is he going to do next? The demons then condemn you for what you didn't do, which isn't even in the Bible in the first place. When I first opened the house of healing, you know, we didn't have any, any money, and I had these chairs. They were the black ones, you know, fold-out chair. I think I got them at Costco or something. I can't remember where I got them. I'll tell you what, these chairs. Ouch. And I'm a very, I teach for a very short period of time, a very short window. We didn't have any problem with the chairs. But sometimes, once a year, I would continue too long. Once every two years. And these chairs began to cause people to backslide. These things were hurting the fanny. So, a good friend in the ministry gave me some money, and I got these beautiful puppies. That had nothing to do with God. Chairs got nothing to do with the Lord. That was my decision. It was wrong. I shouldn't have got them black chairs. We changed the chairs. Who cares? Spiritually. Who cares here? Lots of people. See, this is important. But God, no. What kind of chair you sit on to get a touch from the Holy Ghost? Dude, in Africa, they don't have any chairs. They just sit in the dirt. They used to sit on sawdust. What does that do? Nothing. It's all a matter of your heart. Doesn't matter where you sit, what kind of water, rituals, forms, nothing. None of that matters. Just your heart opening up to the gifts of the Spirit, the fruit of the Spirit, the moving of the Spirit, which is what you're going to do. Boop. And then that answer. 
And that should be the end of it. No more questions. There's a green bucket in the back if you would like to help us out to pay for the radio and TV programs. We would be indebted to you. Thank you for your offering. Um, please remember that part two of the Gifts of the Spirit is next Friday. I will be here. We're going to take a five-minute break, which allows you to use the restroom. There's a bathroom there, and there's another bathroom out that door to your right. Tonight, we're going to have a special healing service, and then we are going to go to the impartation service. If you know what your gift you're supposed to have, if you know that, we're going to pray for you to receive your gift tonight. If you do not know that, we're going to pray for you separately so that you can receive a revelation of what it's supposed to be. What kind of gift are you supposed to have? All right? Okay. I'll close in prayer. Dear Lord, you see all these people tonight, they came out, you know why they came out here? They came out here to hear your word. Not one person showed up here to see me. And that's the way it should be. <clears throat> Lord, Maricopa County is in deep trouble, soaked in sin. And I know what you're doing. You're going to raise up some warriors and fighters with the gifts and the fruits of the Spirit. And we're going to move through this county like a mighty rushing wind. Lord, I'm asking you to make it the people here tonight. I'm asking for each one of them. Everybody that needs to be healed, I want healed tonight. Just like you do. Everybody who needs to find out what their gifts are, I want you to tell them tonight. Every person who knows what gift they're supposed to have, receives it tonight. Any person with a gift that's being blocked, that blockage is going to be removed from their soul tonight so they can so they can receive their gifts and march through Maricopa County like a spiritual monster, like the apostles, like the New Testament warriors. And so, Lord, in Jesus' holy name, I pray your anointing, your supernatural grace be upon each person here tonight and each person that stays for the service. Those who are not able to give because of the economy right now, Lord, I pray a double blessing on their lives and I'm asking you for your job. I'm asking you to pay these bills. I'm asking you to make your move as only you can. Those who do have jobs and have been blessed, Lord, I thank you from the bottom of my heart for it and I bless their lives even more. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ, so let it be written. So let it be done. Amen.